This is the Diplomatic Encounter, a current affairs program that gives you important issues in diplomatic circles, of course. My name is Chido Guncelio. In today's show, we're featuring the International Day of Yoga, which the Indian community in Zimbabwe joined the rest of the world in celebrating. This was the second edition as it was proclaimed by the United Nations two years ago. The day was celebrated in three different cities in Zimbabwe, that is Harare, Blawayo, and Victoria Falls. Now, before we go any further, some of you might be asking, what is this day all about? Yoga is an art and science of healthy living. It is a spiritual discipline based on an extremely subtle science which focuses on striking harmony between the mind and the body. Yoga is one of the oldest sciences of the world, which is useful for preserving and maintaining one's physical and mental health as also for spiritual evolution. Yoga has transcended time and boundaries. This 5,000 year old discipline was brought to the shores of the Western world in the late 19th century. Swami Vivekananda, hailed as one of the first yoga pioneers, traveled to the United States and England and first introduced the Western world to the practice of yoga. By the early 20th century, the physical and physiological benefits of yoga gained more attention in the West when Paramahamsa Yogananda came to Boston in 1920 to address a conference on religious liberals. With a heightened interest in spiritual and holistic practices of the East, in the 1930s, students from the West began traveling to India to learn and practice yoga. Sri Aurobindo's ashram in Pondicherry became one of the popular destinations for seekers of yoga and spirituality. The holistic approach of yoga is well established as it brings harmony in all walks of life and thus is known for disease prevention, promotion of health and management of a number of lifestyle related disorders. Today, yoga is popular across the globe not just due to its efficacy in the management of diseases but also of its strength in relief to the practitioner from mental and emotional distress and providing a feeling of well-being. Hence, yoga nowadays is being practiced as part of healthy lifestyle globally. Yogic principles of wellness help strengthen and develop positive health, enabling us to withstand stress better. This yogic health insurance is achieved by normalizing the perception of stress, optimizing the reaction to it, and by realizing the increased stress effectively through various yogic practices. Modern day lifestyle has become a major cause for a number of ailments globally and has introduced a number of challenges on the health front. Stress, improper dietary habits, and sedentary living have led to the decline in our health performance, resulting in our suffering from various cardiovascular diseases and metabolic disorders. Yoga may be a panacea for these modern day health problems. Today, healing aspects of yoga are becoming increasingly popular. It has been understood as a science and a philosophy. Only those who practice it on a daily basis know that yoga is also an art. Morality and ethics are involved in the art of healing. As so many of you have already discovered, yoga is much more than a physical exercise. It enables us to access a new dimension of the self. Even while providing a holistic approach to preventive health care and wellness. Yoga helps us to restore our balance and furnishes us with a much needed sense of clarity. And through its unifying power, we seek completeness and at the same time, a oneness with the world. Member countries of the United Nations supported this call and the UN proclaimed June 21st as the International Day of Yoga. UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon 
observed that by proclaiming 21st June as the International Day of Yoga, the General Assembly has recognized the holistic benefits of this timeless practice and its inherent compatibility with the principles and values of the United Nations. When I outline a vision for an International Yoga Day in September 2014 at the United Nations General Assembly, even I did not anticipate the enormous enthusiasm for the occasion from all corners of the world. There was special significance in choosing June 21st as the International Day of Yoga. The summer solstice falls on 20th to 21st June, when the rays of the sun directly strike one of the two tropical latitude lines. June 21st being the longest day of the year marks the beginning of summer in the northern hemisphere and heralds the beginning of winter in the southern hemisphere. All of you are the ambassadors of yoga taking forward India's ancient message to the world. I thank you for your commitment and welcome you as sisters and brothers of India's family. The word yoga is derived from the Sanskrit word yug, meaning to unite. Fittingly, yoga has united the modern world on this day and forever. You're watching The Diplomatic Encounter. Join us after the break. Welcome to the second segment of the Diplomatic Encounter where we're still talking of the International Day of Yoga which the Indian community in Zimbabwe joined the rest of the world to celebrate. At one place, 35,985 people have gathered and celebrated the first International Day of Yoga which was presided by the Prime Minister of India, His Excellency, Mr. Narendra Modi. The event was also celebrated across the world. Millions of people participated with full enthusiasm. The stage was set on the iconic boulevard Rajpath in New Delhi to bring people of diverse beliefs, nationalities and age groups to come together not only to do yoga, but create a new awareness of peace and harmony. The Yoga Day celebration on Rajpath set a Guinness World Record for the largest yoga lesson at a single venue, with 35,985 people performing yoga at once. It broke a previous 10-year-old record set in India in the city of Gwalior in November 2005, with people of 84 different and unique nationalities taking part in this event. A second Guinness World Record was also set for the most nationalities in a yoga lesson. Charge D Affairs at the Embassy of India in Harare was happy with the attendance that turned to the Indian House in Zimbabwe. And this event, the second International Day of yoga was celebrated overwhelmingly with the participation of a huge Indian nationals and Zimbabwean nationals and this time we are very happy to see a large number of Zimbabwean nationals which is a good sign of our Zimbabwean friends adopting our ancient culture and the tradition of yoga. Certainly this yoga will bring very important 
health benefits when it is practiced in the proper form. If we manage to transmit and impart even simple steps of yoga to the entire citizenry on this planet, we can bring down the ailments that human beings are suffering right now at least by twenty-five to thirty percent within a matter of next ten years. This will be a huge step in terms of physical, psychological and the inner well-being of every human being. The Indian community in Zimbabwe and the friends of India, the Zimbabwean community, as you witnessed, the event was highly successful. Over and above 250 people of Indian nationals and friends of India and various uh, uh, nationals have also participated in this event. Janitor from Brahma Kumari say that most people confuse yoga for a religion. Yet, it is not a religion but a practice that is open to everyone. The one thing people have a misconception of of yoga is that they think yoga is like some sort of religious practice, but it is not. It is simply yoga exercises. It simply helps you to go within. And exercise has nothing to do with religion, it has nothing to do with race, culture. In fact, it embraces all and just allows you to get connected and unified with your body and soul. Yoga is something for humanity, it's not dependent on um, whether you're male or female, whether you're fit or unfit. Yoga is not about any of that, it's about being human and exploring that. Yoga helps a human being to unfold his full potential. Yoga improves the quality of life which is so much needed today. Yoga can wipe the tears and bring smiles on every face. It can bring celebration and skill in everyone's life. International Yoga Day, it's, uh, it's an opportunity for us to introduce yoga to people who otherwise wouldn't have taken yoga up. They wouldn't have considered it or they never seen it in its full-fledged light. Um, it's an opportunity for us to bring it in front of them and uh, show them what it's about. Yoga can offer you tools to experience a dimension within yourself that nothing else can really give it to you. If, you really, if one really is willing to strive, it's very much available and it's very much possible. Watching the diplomatic encounter, join us after the break. Welcome to the third and final segment of the Diplomatic Encounter where we're still talking about the International Day of Yoga which the Indian community in Zimbabwe joined the world in celebrating. Here are some of the comments by the participants. As a Ugandan, I think I buy the benefits of yoga uh, and the two which are key for me is uh, the freshness that it brings to your body and mind. But uh, more importantly, I think it's about the alertness that uh, you get after doing that. You become more alert and uh, as we continue to do our work in the course of the week or in the course of the year, that alertness is, uh, is needed in what we are doing. 
So I associate with yoga for those benefits, freshness and alertness. The yoga was introduced to me by uh, women friends. Uh, you know, when you go for meetings and uh, after you know the meeting in the evening, you have uh, sessions to to get fit. So some ladies introduced yoga to me, and that was about I think three years ago. It wasn't in Zimbabwe. By then, I was still in Uganda. So I continue to do yoga in my house. But uh, today, I was uh, uh, invited by my friend Hope Chigudu who was invited by another friend. And so we happen to be part of the second international yoga day. I always do this. I love yoga. It's one of my day-to-day -day practice to enhance health. And like you heard the ambassador saying, one of the benefits of yoga really is that it prevents different diseases. And even in the eventuality that someone gets sick, yoga also helps to um, reduce some of the effects of the diseases that one can encounter. And it's also one of the things that people should just be doing on a day to day in order to stay fit, in order to stay mentally alert and in order to stay mentally focused. For me, I've really enjoyed the benefits of um, alertness and awareness, um, you know, coming from doing yoga now and again. Um, how I got to know about uh, today's event, I am one of the family members of Art of Living Foundation, which also um, does a lot of um, trainings and encourage um, consciousness and health. And one of the practices that we do under the Art of Living is yoga. And that's how I came to be part of um, today's event. My name is Arlene Wilson-Max. I'm the managing director of a Zimbabwean-based company called Africa Exchange. My team and I have been here with the Embassy of India, uh, based here in Zimbabwe, and we've enjoyed our experience. Some of my team members have uh, experienced yoga for the first time. We have learnt and understood the values that it brings.